You know, lever actions are one of the most iconic guns in American history, but for a lot of modern shooters, they look at these things as somewhat of a novelty, and rightfully so. A lot of these guns are sold and marketed as, you know, wall pieces or, you know, show off pieces, you know, with a lot of gold inlays and special designs and all this kind of stuff. But there is a model out there that I found that could appeal to more people in a modern day for modern shooters anyways. Uh, and that is the Henry Big Boy X model. And so I'm going to show you all of those features that Henry has done with this to bring it into the 21st century. I'm going to tell you what I think the practical uses for this specific gun is and uh, give it an overall grade and my overall opinion of it as well. And so no matter what your opinion is, I'd love to hear that down below after the video as well. And if you like what I do, consider subscribing or joining the channel. Let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I want to talk about is the look of the gun, right? There's no special engravings or anything like that. You have this dark blue finish on here and you have the black furniture, which gives it that tactical appearance, but it's more than just a look, although it does look pretty cool. Uh, starting with the barrel. So we have a 17.4 inch barrel here, but it's threaded. Okay, so 5 eighths by 24 thread. So we can either run a direct thread suppressor, you know, or you can run your favorite muzzle device to be able to quickly attach the suppressor. And so this isn't a really important feature to have on any modern gun is the ability to suppress it. And we have that here. Uh, also, these are offered in multiple chambering. So you have 45 Colt, 38 Special with 357 Magnum or 44 Special and 44 Magnum. Another thing you'll see right behind that is the front fiber optic. So the front one is green. The uh, rear is actually adjustable, fully adjustable, and it has the red fiber optic. So you're going to be able to see that really, really nice sight picture in the daytime. Now, of course, modern guns, you have to have the ability to mount an optic and they have it drilled and tapped up here. So you can put Picatinny rail uh, up top and run a you know nice red dot to give you an even better sight picture. But it doesn't stop there. So there's a couple more things I want to talk about as far as features here. Uh, you have the magazine tube, so we can quickly drop those down. It has the bullet shaped cutout underneath the uh, magazine tube right there, so we can quickly drop them down. Seven round uh, plus one in the pipe capacity. We have a Picatinny rail underneath, so if you want to attach a light or a laser, or at the three and nine o'clock positions, you have the M-lock slots too. Pretty cool. We also have a spot right behind that Picatinny for a sling swivel, and we have one back here in the rear of the stock as well. We have a little bit of stippling on both sides of the handguard here. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, particularly rough or, you know, super aggressive to do its job. And I think it does do a pretty decent job. It feels good in the hand. Uh, of course, we have a you know 14 inch length of pull, but that can be adjusted by either you know putting a different uh, butt pad on back here, so you can you know replace that and adjust it for your needs. I find personally that it does a pretty good job, and I don't see a real need to change that. Synthetic furniture as well. So if you're doing drills or maybe you're taking a hunting or any number of things. You're in, you know, adverse weather conditions. You don't have to worry about, you know, this stuff messing up like a walnut stock or something like that. Now, in addition to the magazine tube where we can quickly load it, we can also top off with the side loading gate. Now, I didn't realize that Henry just came out with a side loading gate in 2019 and being one of the pioneers in lever actions, I thought they, they had done this way before that, but doing some research for this video, that, yeah, 2019 was the first one that they ever offered. Uh, this is fantastic if you want to top off the rifle, um, if you've you know shot a couple and you just want to quickly load those right there. And then coming back to the lever. So we have a large loop right here, really buttery smooth action. Of course, that's going to do two things for us. It's going to cock the hammer back for us, and it's going to allow us to eject and then chamber a new round. No issues whatsoever. I mean, unless you short stroke it, this thing is super reliable. Uh, as far as that, we have a nice single stage trigger. Boom. 
no cross bolt style safety, but it does have a transfer bar. So we can just press down on the trigger slightly, hold on to the hammer, let it forward and boom, you're good to go. And then again, we have that synthetic stock right here, seven pounds, three ounces. So, you know, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but if you put a nice little red dot or something like that on there and a flashlight, you're not gonna be adding a whole lot. So you could still probably keep it under eight and a half pounds all decked out with a sling and all that. Now, an interesting note about lever actions. This technology was around at the time of the Civil War. And so the standard issued rifle of the time was the Springfield 1861. This is actually an 1884, so they're not the same gun. But to give you an idea of how big the guns were back then, you know, I think the 1861 had a 40-inch barrel which is insane. But of course, those guns were muskets, right? So you were, you know, you were loading them from the muzzle in one shot at a time. This too is one shot at a time, but it is a breech loaded gun. So anyways, uh, you know, same idea, okay? This one being a little bit quicker, of course, than a uh, traditional musket, but still there was a lot of pushback to something like the lever action. The Henry's of the time, by the way, they shot a uh, 44 rimfire, which you could hold 15 rounds in the tube at the time. So you could replace a lot of men by having one lever action in your unit, and you could put down a lot more firepower. And that was one of the issues. They didn't want soldiers wasting a ton of ammunition, but there was also, you know, politics around this whole thing as well. Now there was a general by the name of James Ripley who actually sabotaged a lot of the lever action orders and he would cancel them. He would cancel them on technicalities. Uh, so he really did not want that new technology being used. He thought that it was a little too risky to try something new at such a crucial time in history. Now today we would see that as silly, but at the same time, uh, President Lincoln actually forced him into retirement um, in 1863. And so there you go, there's that. Uh, but it definitely was a huge benefit having these. And that's why, like I said, a lot of soldiers spent their own money on these lever actions because they were so useful. Now, of course, I want to talk about the practical uses of this gun today, but I also want to talk about the way it shoots. First of all, the lever action, the action itself of this gun is super smooth to use. And uh, this is my first lever action that I've ever purchased for myself. And so, you know, learning how to shoot it and, you know, getting quicker with it as opposed to, you know, kind of dropping it down, actually getting used to working the action like that. Um, but overall, man, it's just a very smooth operating gun and no issues with short stroking or anything like that. One issue I did have is my very first couple of shots. I think the rear sight came out of its base. Uh, it was just a little bit too loose straight from the factory. So I tightened it up. No issues with it since then. And then of course I never used the optic on this thing. Um, I just used the iron sights. And they did a really nice job because that green dot just shows up so, so nicely during the daylight. Recoil impulse is, it's just a really satisfying push you get out of the 44 Magnum. There's really not a lot to it. Of course, when I went to go shoot prone, you have the practical application there because you're, you're laying prone and you got to kind of, you know, turn it to the side and then, you know, it doesn't work as well. Okay. And so there, there is a uh, limitations there, but overall it did a good job. Of course, if you want to shoot 44 special, you can do that and uh, get an extra round in there. Now, as far as the practical uses, I think the first one is probably hunting. Okay. So inside of 75 yards, you could take a deer with this thing. No problem. Drilled and tapped, put a nice dot on this thing. Of course you have the Picatinny rail up here. You could put a flashlight. And so, you know, one of the other uses is home defense or even maybe a truck gun. This is a really durable finish. So I don't know if you'd have to worry about beating it up too much, especially if you have it in some kind of a lock box, which is uh, the preferable uh, way to, to store these in your vehicle. 
Um, but it could be used for that application, right? It's not out of the question. You know, when you take the highly engraved versions of these guns and, you know, the Golden Boys and all of the commemorative guns that they have, obviously those are showpieces. But this one is more than that. As far as a training gun, um, you know, again, it might not be the best training gun, but it is something I would potentially consider training somebody on because the recoil is minimal. Um, again, I think there's better options out there. Uh, maybe even a bolt action or a 22 uh, long rifle may be a better option, but the option is there for this one. It can be done. If that's something you want to do. So you kind of get where I'm going with this. It's not the best hunting gun. It's not the best self-defense gun. It's definitely not the best training gun, but with all the modern updates that they've done to the big boy X model specifically. I think it is a fantastic lever gun and I think it has some of the more practical uses and can be used in those applications more than some of the other lever guns out there for sure. And so overall, if I had to grade it on its performance and practical uses and just kind of combining everything, I would say it'd be like an eight out of 10. As a lever action on its own, well, we got some more that I definitely want to review before I start comparing it to other models that I know nothing about. And so that will be for a future video for sure. But I don't see this as the last lever action I will ever review. That's for sure, because I really had a good time with this one. I love to hear from you guys that have maybe shot these, you know, a lot, or maybe you're looking at getting one for the first time. Whatever the case may be, let me know your opinion down below. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And if you want to, you could join the channel or join Patreon as well. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.